No. Next theorem is this is very tough result and very important result. Curvature kappa and torsion tau of a helix C. Right? So this is a C is a helix, it is a curve, and kappa is its curvature and tau is its torsion are in constant ratio to the curvature kappa 1. This is a curvature of a second curve. So what is second curve? So this is the curvature of kappa 1 of the plane of the plane of a curve C obtained by projecting curve C on a plane perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. Okay? So this is a projection of a curve on a plane perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. Okay? So uh, we will uh, more understand uh, when we are doing the result. So in other words, in other words, our purpose is to prove kappa is equal to kappa one sin square alpha and tau is equal to kappa sin alpha cos alpha where alpha is the constant angle at which the helix cuts the generator okay? so helix which is a curve which cuts the generator so that is an angle so that is a relation kappa and tau this is a curvature and torsion of c and kappa 1 and tau 1 which is a curvature and torsion of a uh, curve C1 which is the projection of a C on a plane perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. Clear? So this is the relation that we want to find out. Now just uh, first see the figure. Clear? So this is a cylinder. So this is a cylinder and if it is a cylinder suppose this is a curve C and this is a curve C and this is a curve C1. Okay. So this is a circle. Circle and this is a x-axis. This point is x-axis. And this is a y-axis. And this is a z-axis. And this z-axis is parallel to the. This is a parallel to the generator. Clear. Okay. So then the z-axis is along the direction of generator of the cylinder. Now this is a helix curve which is making constant angle and this is a C1 curve which is a projection. Now this C1 at this point P dash this is a 90 degree angles right. So this is a 90 degree angles. Now this AP is this A and P right. This curve P point is on a C curve which is helix. The arc length is S. So this is arc length is S and similarly AP dash the arc length is S dash. So first understand the geometry of the question. If this is a S dash and this is a S. Now C is related to arc length S and uh, C1 is related to arc length S dash. So remember this. Now this uh, from this figure this point is P and this point is P dash. Now from this, this from this uh, triangle, from this triangle, B, P dash and this point is A. If this point is A, then the angle between, angle between this, angle between the helix and its generator. So this is parallel to generator. This is parallel to generator and this is a curve helix. So tangent at this place. So angle between these two curves which is equal to alpha that is by definition if this is a alpha then in that case this point is a this point is z and this point is s now from this by using trigonometry now this s dash this is equal to s sine of alpha and this z is which is equal to s cos of alpha so remember this this is the s dash this we can find the relation between S, S dash and Z. I repeat once again. Now from this, 
this direction is parallel to generator. Yeah. So this is a curve helix. So angle between them is alpha. If angle between them is alpha, then draw this figure A, B dash B. So this is a alpha. Then using the trigonometry, then find the value of sine alpha, cos alpha. From this, we can find the value of S dash. And similarly, we can find the value of J. So that is a very important part. So the first step is how we can find the relation between them. Now after that, what is the R vector? This is R vector, position vector of point P. If it is a position vector of this point, this is on helix and this is on uh, curve C. If P vector is position vector, then this is depending upon S. So first coordinate depends on S, S dash and Y coordinate again depends on S dash and this is a S of cos alpha. This is a value of Z. So Z is equal to S cos alpha. Clear? So we have three point X coordinate, Y coordinate and Z coordinate. The value of Z is S cos alpha. Right? And the value of X which is depending upon S dash, Y is also depending upon S dash. From this S and S dash are depending to each other. Now this is R. Now differentiate with respect to S. If we differentiate this R with respect to S. Now we can differentiate this through S dash. We can differentiate through S dash. So this can be written as a dx by ds dash into ds by ds. Right. Similarly dy by ds dash and ds by ds, ds dash by ds. Now derivative of this term with respect to S cos alpha is constant. So this is a cos of alpha. So this is a value of R dash. Clear. Now substitute its value ds dash by ds. That we can find from this. So from this ds dash by ds which is equal to sin alpha. Then its reciprocal is equal to 1 by sin alpha. So from this ds dash by ds which is equal to sin alpha. Similarly here ds dash by ds which is again equal to sin alpha. Here which is, which is equal to cos of alpha. Again differentiate with respect to s. So again we differentiate through s dash. So we get from this this values. Again we get from this this values. Right. So its derivative is 0. So this will become a sin square alpha. And again this will become a sin square alpha. Right. So what we get? We get a t dash which is equal to this values. t dash equal to this values. By using free net formula. Kappa n dash. This is equal to this into sin square alpha. And this into sin square alpha. And third coordinate is 0. Now to find the kappa. So taking its magnitude. When we take its magnitude. This will become its square plus this square plus 0 square. And square root of the entire term. This is entire term. So we get from on simplification kappa is equal to sin square alpha into square root of this values. Now what is kappa 1? What is kappa 1? Kappa 1 is the curvature of projection C1 of C. What is C1? C1 is the projection of curve C. So that is a curvature of this projection. Now we take the position vector of P dash by R vector. R1 vector. So this is a, a position vector. So this is again depend upon S dash and Y is depend upon S dash and this Z coordinate is 0. Now here, so just uh, differentiate these two points P and P dash. Right? Now the coordinate of X and Y is X and Y. Okay? And again here the point X and Y are same. They are depending upon S dash. Here Z has the values. Here Z has zero values. So that is the difference between 
the position vector of p and p dash so remember here only change z from 0 to z so that is a s cos alpha so remember this there is only the difference between the coordinate of p and p dash this now again differentiate with respect to s dash now this curve is depending upon s dash so we will differentiate with respect to s dash here so here we directly differentiate directly differentiate and this value is zero again differentiate again we differentiate this and this clear so this is kappa n one vector now this is the principal normal vector of c1 curve so remember for c curve this is a t n and p for c1 curve it is a t1 vector n1 vector and b1 vector so from this kappa 1 we can find the value which is equal to this so this is equation number 3 now divide this two number equation by equation number 3 so this is equation number 2 this is equation number 3 now divide it so this will be replaced by 1 by kappa 1 so see uh, divide it uh, 1 by kappa so this will become a kappa into kappa 1 which is equal to sin square alpha since alpha is constant so this is equal to constant direction. so that is a relation kappa o is equal to kappa 1 into sin square alpha right now we know that kappa is equal to tau which is equal to tan of alpha right so that is a relation in order to find the value of tau now this tau can be written as this is shifted to this kappa cot alpha right now what is the value of kappa this is a kappa and this is kappa cot alpha right now this can be written as kappa sin square alpha into cot alpha this values clear so substitute the value of kappa which is equal to kappa 1 sin square alpha right substitute the value of kappa which is kappa 1 sin square alpha so this value right so we get this relation tau which is kappa 1 sin alpha into cos alpha so this is the relation of tau and this is a relation of kappa clear so all these two relations are very important expected for examination now this terms where we can replace them in terms of rho and sigma so simply kappa is written in the form of 1 by rho kappa 1 is 1 by rho 1 from this we get this relation and tau is re replaced by 1 by sigma and this is 1 by rho 1 so this is the relation in term of sigma and rho clear so this can be find the value of this now next topic is circular helix so what is circular helix which lies which lies on the surface of circular cylinder clear so that is the only difference which lies on the circular cylinder clear so it makes angle with the alpha with the generator now on same as uh, we did in the previous uh, article this is a this point this is p point so angle between them is alpha so this is a p dash point clear so this is a p dash point on the circle this is a circle and we take this is origin and this is a y axis here we are taking here this is a x axis and this is a p dash point on a circle and this is this p point on the helix so this is a curve remember now projection of ap on xy plane which makes subtend angle theta at origin so remember this projection makes an angle theta with xy plane this is xy plane this projection is ap on xy plane which subtend angle theta at the origin now what is the equation of cylinder 
equation of cylinder from this circle x square plus y square which is equal to a square right now what is arc length we know that theta is equal to l by r l is arc length so here l is s1 right so s1 radius is r is replaced by a and angle is theta so what is the relation s1 is equal to a theta now p lies this p point lies on the cylinder p lies on the cylinder then it means x is equal to a cos theta y is equal to a sin theta so this is a parametric equation of this x square plus y square which is equal to a square now what is z third body now z is equal to s cos alpha s cos alpha so what is the value of s we already find it which is s1 over sin alpha so this is a s into cot of alpha what is the value of s1 which is equal to a theta so this will become a theta into cot of alpha clear so this is equal to b theta what is b b is a cot of alpha so this is the equation of circular helix so remember this equation so equation of circular helix is a cos theta and a sin theta third coordinate is b theta so that we can find the equation of circular helix which is a cylindrical circle cylindrical then this is the equation of circular helix now next is circle of curvature this is circle of curvature now if remember the important things we have circle of curvature and next will be sphere of curvature in circle of curvature v has which has three point contact three point contact with curve at p is called osculating circle clear so this is circle of curvature or osculating circle these are the both the thing so what is osculating circle osculating circle is have which has three point of contact with curve at p point p then it is a called osculating circle if it has four point of contact then it is called a osculating sphere so first uh, differentiate the osculating circle and osculating sphere that we will do in the next article so both are the same line of action so if you understand this then you can understand osculating sphere now in this case what is osculating circle or we can say that circle of curvature if it has three point contact three point contact with the curve remember this with the curve where we are finding the osculating plane with the curve at p is called a osculating circle right so this is a osculating circle if osculating circle sphere then it has four points so this is a difference between osculating circle and osculating sphere now how we will find the equation of this circle of curvature center and radius of circle of curvature how we can find it so just uh, only depending on the definition just to see it now this is a suppose this is a curve clear so this is a curve at this point p and this is a tangent vector this is a this vector is a unit tangent vector this vector is principal normal and this vector is a y normal clear so this is a circle this is a circle clear and p is the position vector of point p p is the position vector of point p and this c is the center of circle this is the center of circle and this c vector which is a oc this oc vector and op vector this is the position of p vector with respect to fixed point e so remember this which is a position vector fixed point o so this is a point on the curve osculating 
that is a curve curve c so point on the curve c clear so this is the center of circle okay when we join this this oc vector is a c vector and this op vector is position vector r vector and this uh, pc vector which is a radius of circle and this is a a vector remember and this is a normal vector so which is called a principal normal vector perpendicular to t the third vector is a binormal clear so what is the equation of uh, circle so here it is a equation of circle not sphere so equation of circle which is equal to r minus c magnitude which is equal to a vector which is radius what is equation of curve r vector depending upon r of s so intersection of this curve ha huh, th this is a sphere right so intersection of sphere and curve that will give you a circle remember this so this is a sphere so it is a intersection of sphere and curve that give a circle now this is equation of curve so intersection of curve with sphere that give a equation of circle that can be written as fs which is r minus c vector whole square minus a square which is equal to 0 so this is equation number 1 okay now this curve right this curve has three point of contact this curve has three point of contact with sphere and osculatic sphere has four point of contact if it has three point of contact it satisfy three condition first f of s0 second f dash s0 and third f double dash s equal to 0 because it has three point of contact now if fs is equal to 0 so that is the given equation we already know equation number 2 now it's a taking its a derivative so when we differentiate this dot r dash which is equal to 0 what is r dash r dash is t vector so this vector is perpendicular to t vector so remember this this equation gives a, this equation gives a, this is perpendicular to t vector this this vector is perpendicular to tangent vector now next step in order to next step the second derivative is zero now differentiate this is t vector now it's a derivative r dash dot t vector which is equal to zero this will be shifted to again t so this dot product is again shifted to one clear okay? now from this this is a t dash the value of t dash is kappa n this will become with this values so on simplify this is equal to minus 1 by kappa so this is a minus rho right now by definition this vector lies in a osculating plane at p clear so what is osculating plane osculating plane is a which lies at a, uh, between uh, 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 unit tangent and norm now osculating plane this vector lies in osculating plane so remember if it lies in osculating plane also it is perpendicular to tangent vector so it vector also lies in normal plane okay it is lies in osculating plane and also it is lies in normal plane so it lies in intersection so what is its uh, intersection osculating plane intersection normal plane so it means the intersection between osculating plane and normal plane it is a principal normal vector it is a principal normal vector it means this is uh, along the principal normal vector if this is along the principal normal vector then this vector can be written as scalar vector of a principal normal vector okay now find the value of this lambda so taking dot product with n vector so this will give a lambda now when we taking the dot product with n vector 
So this lambda will become this values. Now by substitute the value of this equation that is from this this is minus rho. So this is a minus rho. Clear? So what is the value of lambda? This is minus rho. So we get the equation which is r vector which is equal to c minus rho n dash vector. So this is the equation of osculating circle. Now, in order to find the radius of curvature, so this is a vector scale which is equal to this values. This value dot product this vector, substitute its value from this equation, from this equation. So this is minus rho n, minus rho n. So this is rho square. So this is a radius of curvature. Yeah. So what we get, we get the equation and radius of curvature of the osculating circle and osculating circle has three point of contact now the properties properties of osculating circle now in this article remember these two things one is this r vector which is equal to c minus rho n yeah c vector which is equal to r plus rho n clear so this is a radius of this is a radius vector and this is a uh, this is a a vector is a radius of curvature and this is a c vector clear so c vector on a this vector position vector of a point which lies on a osculating circle okay? so remember these two equation that we will use in the properties now as we already discussed take c1 which is a locus of center of circle of curvature at point p on curve c now we have two curves one is c and second is locus of center of circle of curvature at point p that is a that is a c1 now our aim is there are three properties property number one the tangent to the locus of the center of the curvature lies in the normal plane of the original center. Clear? The tangent to the locus of the center of curvature lies in the normal plane of the original curve. Second property, if C is the curve of constant curvature kappa, the locus C1 of its center curvature is also a curvature of constant curvature and its tor torsion varies inversely as that of C. Similarly, property number 3, principal normal to the C is the normal to the C1 at a point where curvature is stationary. Clear? So, reading these property, it is very boring. Clear? So, in order to when we read these property, it looks uh, very boring. But when we, when we discuss its proof, then we can understand what kind of property are they. Now, in this case, so just see the proof. What is C1? This C1 is the locus of center of circle of curvature. Remember this. At point P on curve C. Right? So this is a locus of center of circle of curvature so this is a curve c1 and this is the original curve c and p is point on this and p1 is point on this now what is r1 this is a position vector of any point on c c1 this is a position vector of any point on c1 so r1 this so we know that the this relation as we discussed now this c vector can be written as r plus rho 1. Now this vector is replaced by r1 because we take this vector in term of r1. So that is a relation number 1. Now it will look like it in simple form. Now if we differentiate r1 with respect to s1. So this is a arc length with respect to this. And S is arc length with respect to R. So remember this. S1 is with this. And 
एस इज विद आर एंड कैपा वन टी वन एन वन बी वन इज विद दिस एंड टी एन बी कैपा एन टाउ इज विद दिस क्लियर नाउ डिफरेंशिएट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एस वन सिंपली सो जस्ट डिफरेंशिएट राइट सो वी कैन नॉट डिफरेंशिएट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एस वन सो वी डिफरेंशिएट दिस टर्म विद रिस्पेक्ट टू एस so this is when we can return in this form and this form clear so here it's a derivative it is a product right so rho dash n plus rho n dash into ds by ds1 why this because we differentiate this with respect to s clear now substitute value this will become r dash this will become r dash means a t vector and this will become this is this we both term we will take outside clear now this is rho dash n vector and this is rho n dash into ds by ds1 what we get we get this t n vector and rho n dash substitute n dash in term of tau b minus kappa t now this will become this relation t1 vector rho dash n vector plus rho into tau into b vector into ds by ds1 vector this is not vector this is a derivative now from this t1 lies in a plane containing a normal and binormal so this is a normal and this is a binormal clear so it lies in a plane which contains a normal and binormal so see the geometry this is a t vector this is a n vector this is a b vector and this is a osculating plane this is a osculating this is a normal plane and this is a rectified plane now what is the plane which lies between n and b this is n and this is b so which lies this plane is a lies between n and b which is a normal plane so it means this t1 vector lies in a normal plane clear so t1 vector lie in normal plane which prove our first result so that is our first result to prove that it's a tangent tangent of that curve right that lies in a normal plane now next second part we know that the given is kappa is constant so its reciprocal is constant so its derivative is zero if its derivative is zero so by equation number 2 this equation now this term will be zero if this term will be zero so we get rho tau b vector this into ts by ts1 to find its value taking the dot product of t1 vector we get this values we get this scale from this we get ds by ds1 so in this way we can find the value of ds by ds1 now from this substituting this equation number 4 in equation number 3 right so this is equation number 4 this is equation number 3 substitute this will be cancel so t1 vector will be parallel ja equal to b vector this values clear so t1 vector is equal to binormal vector of the c curve this is a tangent vector of c1 curve which is equal to binormal to c curve so what we get now again differentiate we differentiate we get this values substitute value by free net formula from this we what we get we get this n1 vector here we get minus kappa n1 vector it means these two vector are parallel so n1 vector is parallel to n2 vectors so what we conclude we conclude we have two curve one is c1 and second is a c curve 
second is a C curve. Right? Now, it's the principal normal is parallel to this principal normal. Remember? And it's a tangent is parallel to binormal. It's a tangent is parallel to binormal. And it's a binormal is parallel to this tangent. So, principal normal is seen along same direction for both curves but binormal and normal uh, binormal and unit tangent they are interchanging so their direction are interchanging so in case of c1 the unit tangent vector is along t and this is this direction is in case of c is b right so that is interchanging now from choose this is parallel if this is parallel then we can take n1 equal to so we choose n1 vector which is equal to minus n1 from this we get kappa 1 is equal to kappa because kappa is constant so kappa 1 is again constant again b1 vector so what we get again b1 vector find b1 vector which is parallel to t that we already discussed. So this is parallel to T. Now differentiate this with respect to S on same line. So this we get this kind of equation. Right? Differentiate. This will become dt by ds into ds by ds1. Substitute its value which is 1 by root tau and its value is kappa n vector. This is kappa n. So, this will become rho is again kappa. 1 by rho is kappa. So, this is kappa square tau into n vector. Clear? So, what is this? This is a which is equal to dv by ds which is equal to minus tau n1 vector and this is equal to this vector. So, it means this tau 1 vector is inversely proportional to tau. So, this is a property. Torsion of curve C1. This is a torsion of curve C1 which varies inversely with the normal of the C. Which varies inversely with the normal of the C. So, this is a property number 2. Now, next is property number 3. Okay. Again, on the same line of action, we find the value of T1 that is in previous equation and taking dot product with n vector clear and this value will become 1 this value will become 0 so we get this value right this value what is kappa it is constant what is rho it is constant so rho dash is 0 so this will become this value so which prove the result clear so this t1 vector which is perpendicular to principal normal vector. So all of these are property of the osculating circle. So it is uh, uh, some tough property. So just uh, write it uh, two or three times. See the video and write it two and three up to two and three times. Then you will get the